welcome to Exploring Santa Cruz, a bi-weekly program hosted by Jean Kratzer and Matilda Rand, alternatively. My name is Matilda Rand, and today's topic is the Census of April 2020. I'm joined by Tori Del Favro and Diane Cowan. Why don't we start with both of you telling us what your connection is with Santa Cruz? Uh, well, I grew up here. Um, I work for the U.S. Census Bureau and I am a partnership specialist with them. And uh, I have three kids. We live across the street from my parents. Uh, my kids are going to the high school that I went to. It's, it's a really neat journey to be able to raise your kids in Santa Cruz County. I actually, your director here, I did Leadership Santa Cruz with him, Leadership Santa Cruz County. And then additionally, I've served on a local school board here. I just um, love the privilege of being able to raise my kids in Santa Cruz County. Wonderful. How about you, Diana? I came to Santa Cruz in 1993. I attended UCSC and just immediately knew that I was home. And um, I've lived here ever since. Work at the Santa Cruz Public Libraries. And um, I have recently started working with K-Squid, our new community radio station. And I just love our community and serving the community through library service is a wonderful way to make a living here. Excellent. Well, thank you. So talking about the census, I did a little bit of research and I found that the earliest preserved census is in China, AD Two. And there were 57,671,400,000 people. And the interesting thing is that the older census takers were really targeting particular individuals. For instance, to target them for taxes, or as in the Roman Empire, target them for fitness for military service. Now that changed over time like in the 1500s, 1600s, that purpose changed to from really just individuals to really counting all of the people. We have the census since 1790, and I was wondering if you could give us a little more background on oh, that. Oh, uh, absolutely. So uh, our first census was in 1790, and the framers of our Constitution didn't want power to be distributed on wealth and land. They actually wanted it to be distributed based on population to make sure that everybody had an equal say at a federal level. So um, while you know the census is a national operation, mm -hmm. censuses really take place locally. And um, that's just the beauty of the census is that everyone counts. You know, this is another opportunity to vote because you can create political representation through the 435 congressional seats that are mm -hmm. sliced and diced based off census data, off population of where people are living throughout the United States. It's just a really neat opportunity because the census data comes back locally into the community. School districts are often, um, their boundary lines are redone after they get the census data um, where, pop where the populations are currently residing. Um, you know, Santa Cruz is a little bit more set in stone because we're pretty um, developed out <laughs> against the coast, but um, other parts of California and across the nation, you know, have had some big spikes in populations or um, maybe there's been some migration um, throughout the county, other parts of the county um, have uh, more depth. So you wanna make sure that you know the supervisors that are representing those parts of the county are also um, uh, represented correctly according to the population counts in that area. Great, so you already covered a little bit about the purpose. The reason why in the 20th century so much, many more censuses took place is because the United Nations thought it was very important. They actually uh, sponsor and they support uh, countries uh, where we get very little data from. So, uh, so you talk a little bit about the history, you talk a little bit about the purpose. We will also talk about the um, impact, and you say yeah. a little bit on the community. And I think we can say a lot about that, and then how the community can participate besides taking the census, and, and we will talk about how the census can be taken, because it is in 2020 even, even more different than it was 10 years ago. And then the final thing uh, you already touched upon was the uses of the census. So I want people at home to, to hear a little bit about what we will be discussing. Let's go back to the purpose of it. So the purpose of the census um, is to count everybody that's living in the United States on April 1st, 2020. Yeah. The decennial census happens every 10 years. 
Um, we count everybody living in the United States, and then we report those numbers to the President of the United States on December 31st, 2020. That in turn gets worked through our federal government, and then they turn around and disperse um, what the congressional seats are, the allocations to each state. The census is just really this, I mean, I, I feel like it's just the cornerstone of our democracy, right? It's yeah. about people, right? And it's about people having fair representation at a federal level. And you know, you think about, we are an apolitical agency, but you think about um, how many votes have come across with one or two votes from the House of Representatives making a decision that mm -hmm. affects the entire fabric of our country. Yeah. And so, you know, to make sure that there's a full and accurate count across the United States and make sure that our political representation is appropriated correctly is just, again, the cornerstone of our democracy. Right. I see you shaking and say, yes, that's the, that's the way it is. Now, mm -hmm. y y you are locally involved with the census and, and you actually studied the census and took some, some courses in the census. Tell us a little bit about your involvement. Yeah. I became involved um, because the county contacted the library, recognizing that we would be a good partner to help the Complete Count Committee reach some of those more hard to count people. I have been attending the Complete Count Committee meetings, um, working with other partners, trying to determine ways, the best ways we can really reach people because we recognize how important it is. For the library, it's so important. I mean, part of what our mission is about is helping people become civically engaged, um, be engaged in their government, be engaged with the community, and participation in the census is one of the most important pieces of civic participation that we can have, you know, just to be counted and to get that representation. And I think there's a website called Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah, there's a website called Santa Cruz County Counts.us. Um, and I just want to expand a little bit more on right. the complete count committee that's happening here in Santa Cruz County. It's really brilliant. I mean, one of the joys of this work is I get to see just all the great things that are happening in Santa Cruz County. I mean, bet between, you know, the library, community TV, and, um, <laughs> and community radio. And community <laughs> radio. I did an interview with um, Kay Squid. And it's just great to see, um, it's just an all hands on deck opportunity for all the players in Santa Cruz County to pitch in. So the Complete Count Committee is run by the County of Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. And the state of California has understood the importance of the 2020 census. So what they've done is they've kicked in some money to counties to support their work with the census because they want to make sure that there's a full and accurate count um, within the state of California. So the county governments have gotten um, some seed money um, mm -hmm. to get these, these operations going. And the Complete Count Committee is just this beautiful cross-section of all groups in Santa Cruz County. You know, it has education. There's an immigration subcommittee. There is a um, unhoused subcommittee. There's a higher education subcommittee. So they're really working to make sure that we're hitting all the pockets in Santa Cruz County. Mm -hmm. And the crux of that is to make sure that we have the trusted voices in the room that connect, connect with those people in the hard to count populations, whether it be somebody that's um, economically insecure at the time, or maybe a recent immigrant, or maybe somebody that's subleasing a home mm -hmm. that you know they potentially don't want the landlord to know that there's multiple families living in there. So it's like, who do we touch and find in the community to um, make sure that we're corresponding with the right voice to connect with the people to share just how incredibly important the census is locally mm -hmm. for Santa Cruz County. Right. Right. Library, is, is that the only partnership that uh, we have in Santa Cruz? Let me just say that these um, Complete Count Committee meetings are amazing. It really, truly is a mm -hmm. cross-section of the entire community. So in addition to all the government agencies, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've got the cities involved, um, the county, higher education, the county office of education, in addition to all of those, there's a number of local nonprofit groups. And the diversity of missions and people and purposes really coming together for this 
you know, one shared purpose mm -hmm. is just amazing. And some of the connections that I've made just attending the meetings are just really good for further partnership in the future. I, I understand the Community Action Board is particularly interested in making sure the unhoused people are, are counted. Yeah, it's my understanding that um, the county really needed a partner to help plan the strategic plan mm -hmm. and, and kind of over, help oversee the process in getting the complete count. And they approached um, CAB, the Community Action Board, because... They're familiar, because yeah. I, I know that in, in other surveys, you know, this is the census, but in other surveys, they also play an active role in reaching the unhoused people. Mm -hmm. So that's important. So for you, it must be very nice to, to... Oh, I love it. I had a meeting yesterday with the Community Action Board. Um, it's a lovely organization that's doing great work um, just in multiple areas mm -hmm. um, in our community. So they're a great partner to have. They have um, been contracted by um, the County of Santa Cruz to run the Complete Count Committee meetings. And the energy that they bring into that room is just dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I always say that this is knock on fake wood this is the earthquake that's not happening that's bringing all these community groups together in the room we're going to be like oh you're doing this and that and so you know we get in these small discussion groups and we hear the work mm -hmm. that other people are doing in the community and then that just gives us and other people an opportunity to connect people with other services yeah. just to know the depth of um depth of things that's taking place in santa cruz county you are listening to exploring santa cruz on ksqd santa cruz I'm here with Tori Del Favro, Partnership Specialist of the U.S. Census Bureau, and Diane Cowan from the Santa Cruz Public Libraries. Our topic is the census of April 2020. So far, we touched upon a little bit of history of census around the world, the purpose of the U.S. Census, and the collaboration partnership within Santa Cruz County to make sure that every person is counted. We learned about the Complete Count Committee in Santa Cruz County, in which Diana and Tori are participating. Santa Cruz County also has a website called santacruzcountycounts.us, on which you can find more information. Now let's go back to our conversation. Maybe this would be a good time to talk about what do individual people do to participate in the census? How, how do they get approached? How do they know what's happening? So we, we like to knight them and call them census ambassadors. So we're working with people in our community that basically um, we do a training with them. I mean, really the messaging that we want to get out to the community is it's important, it's safe, and it's easy. And so we're taking the time. We have some trainings. If you go to that Santa Cruz County Counts.us website, um, the Community Action Board in partnership with the Census Bureau and the County of Santa mm -hmm. Cruz um, have some opportunities to train people both in English and in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've started at the top with basically getting resolutions passed by the cities and the county government, you know, working with Mr. Stone's office, with Mr. Panetta's office. Um, you know, we started at the top and now we're going to a more micro level as we move closer to Census Day. Because, um, you know, as much as I like to say that I'm local and I'm likable, um, the reality is, is that, you know, perhaps a child's kindergarten teacher might be the best person to get that message yeah. forth to the families yeah. that how this affects free and reduced lunches at their schools, this affects Title I funds. Um, it's, you know, it's critical that they um, make sure that um, these families fill out the census and fill it out, you know, fully to make sure that they understand that please count everybody that's in your house, even if it's a one month old baby, that person is living in the United States on April 1st even and if they the need child, to be counted. Right. Even if the child was just born. If the child is born on April 1st, count that baby. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's not a joke. <laughs> Well, it's funny, one of the things that I've learned uh, through the trainings that CAP have, has provided is that one of the biggest hard to count populations are children zero to five. Yes. And you just think, boy, how could you forget that you've got that baby, you know, sitting in the high chair in the other room, but I, it happens, it yeah. happens. And there's a story about it affecting uh, an undercount of one of our rural populations here in Santa Cruz County um, a rural community was undercounted with their children from zero to five and 
they've been seriously underfunded um, for the last 10 years. Wow. Yeah. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, questions on the census. Yes. It's basically about us living in our house, with whom we're living, where we're living. Mm -hmm. The relationships to people that are living in your mm -hmm. home. Um, one of the changes on the 2020 census is that you get an opportunity, um, you know, you can talk about people living in your home. It also highlights same-sex marriages. Um, so that will give us better data points um, mm -hmm. for people to use. I mean, we're talking about funding here, and I haven't mentioned it um, yet, but um, there's over, $675 billion of federal funding per year is appropriated based off census numbers. Mm -hmm. So there's over 100 federal programs that utilize census data to distribute funds. So if you think about $675 billion per year, and the census, the next census is in 2030, so these numbers stick. Right. And so that's why the Census Bureau um, the county of Santa Cruz, you know, local community-based organizations, the state of California, everybody wants to make sure that there's a fair and accurate count because we want to make sure Santa Cruz County gets their fair share of federal funding. Right. I mean, to me it is, because it's a big undertaking. To me it is, if you do it, do it right and make sure that everybody is counted. The first thing I understand is we're getting an, an invitation. Correct. So in March, of 2020, you will receive three uh, postcards in the mail. Basically, you know, first postcard, second postcard, third postcard, and all those are invitations to respond to the census. You have the opportunity to call in your census. You have the opportunity to ask for a paper form to be mailed home for you. And new in 2020, you have the opportunity to fill out your census online, on your smartphone, on a tablet. You know, that's one of the beauties about partnering with the Santa Cruz Public Library System is that, you know, we can train their staff and talk to them about, um, you know, just giving them a census 101. And again, it's the important, it's safe and easy. And then and the library can open up their computers mm -hmm. for people to come in and basically, you know, like, let's have a census party. Like, did you count? You know, like, let's do it in the spirit of I voted. I've got my sticker. I count. I'm important. You know, we want to make sure that um, we're working with school groups that they could potentially open up their computer labs and have maybe on um, an open house at the end of the school year. So. I'm gonna take it back and say you get those three postcards in the mail. Mm -hmm. And then if you haven't responded by the time the fourth touch from the US Census Bureau is a paper form that's mailed home. So if you haven't responded the first three times um, to online or over the phone, uh, you will get the paper form in the mail. And then you will get a reminder postcard um, if you haven't done one of those three options, a fifth touch from the US Census Bureau. Uh, and we. We really are encouraging people to self-respond to the census. Mm -hmm. It's critical for our operation that people self-respond. Um, if they don't do that, again, everyone counts. So that's when our non-response follow-up operation will head out into the community and start knocking on doors. So what kind of preparation are you doing at the library to right. do what she's asking? Yeah, right now we're just uh, mostly training staff so that they're able to act as trust trusted messengers and deliver the, you know, that it's safe, it's easy, and it's important. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Right. As we get closer to the census, we will probably do some programming around the census. Mm -hmm. We'll be having a display in all of our branches for at least four months leading up to the census with all of the information and handouts and things that just inform people that it's coming. And then after people receive their, their cards in the mail, will um, will be a place where people can come and we'll be promoting. And of course, your role as communications manager is important in this aspect. That's why you're heavily involved. Yes, it is, yeah. because okay. it's gonna, a lot of those hard to count people are in the library. Right. And we want them to know that we're the place, come do it here, our staff can help you. Now, Obviously, it takes a lot of people. I mean, yes, we have staff and library and all that. Um, 
jobs available for people? To oh, absolutely. Um, it, it's, the census is basically the largest non-military operation that the United States does. Mm -hmm. So there will be hundreds of jobs available in Santa Cruz County. People can apply on our website, uh, 2020census.gov backslash jobs. Uh, it's a pretty short application. Uh, we wanna let people know that they're putting their application into a pool and obviously we don't know what our non-response follow-up operation will right. look like until we find out how many people will respond to the census self-respond. So there's a little bit of a lag in there and we wanna communicate that with people. So if they're like, I haven't heard anything, it's not because you're not wanted, it's just that we don't know exactly how many people that we need to hire. Right. Um, additionally, I would like to say that our dress canvassing operation is starting right now and will run through October and we will have um, address canvassers out in the community confirming addresses. We all know that there's some hidden housing you know, throughout mm -hmm. Santa Cruz County. And again, everything that the Census Bureau takes in is confidential. We do not report some hidden housing to the County of Santa Cruz, to landlords, to, to anyone. We do everything that we observe and the data that we receive is confidential and we do not share it with any other agency. Um, I wore my badge today mm -hmm. because I do want to highlight that our address canvassers or our non-response follow-up, the enumerators, you know, they will have a badge on them with their photo. It says Census Bureau, it will have a watermark. And additionally, we work with law enforcement to let um, law enforcement know who's out in the community from the Census Bureau to make sure that everybody understands um, what Census Bureau employees look like and they know if they see somebody with this badge and a black bag that says the Census Bureau on it, um, that they are staff and that they should um, open up the door and talk to those folks. Right, I mean, it's, it's for their benefit to open up the door and respond to people, so. I'm glad that you brought that up uh, because I've heard some feedback on social media and next door that people have been seeing some of these address checkers mm -hmm. and been very confused about what they're doing there. Why are these census people doing counting already? Um, so it's really good to get out there that these guys are just out there checking addresses at this point. So that and when the uh, census comes, mm -hmm. that, that, that you're ready. That, that, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Well, that's the brilliance of having, um, that the Census Bureau has with their community partnership and engagement program, having someone like myself in the community. So, you know, there was that chatter of like, hey, um, of people out in the community. So I instantly turned to Jason Hoppen, who is the communication director for the County of Santa Cruz. And he posted on next door a video from the US Census Bureau of what our address canvassers look like, um, what our badges look like, you know, what bags that they're carrying. So it's like instantly an opportunity to um, mm -hmm. pivot and something's happening in the community and we wanna make sure that all the messaging and importance of the census stays on top and kind of none of the misinformation rises. So it's just a great, another great opportunity and having, you know, working with the library system. I mean, it's like they can turn and talk to us and say, hey, we're hearing this chatter. Mm -hmm. Can you help us with the messaging on that? And um, I should also highlight that I have um, a partner, Christina Granados, who is in Watsonville, mm -hmm. and she does the same brilliant work that I do. <laughs> My little pitch for the <laughs> Census Bureau. <laughs> and uh, at the, in the partnership program to make sure that we're connecting with everyone. Yeah. Well, like I said, if you do it, you have to do it well. And you're looking, you're looking at a lot of uh, different issues where it could go wrong. I heard you say confidentiality. The other thing, of course, is when people come either to check addresses or when people have not responded yet, uh, people come to the door to, to do the census. Mm -hmm. These people will be identifiable by these badges. Uh, they will also not ask you for any information mm -hmm. financially. Yep. Uh, you know, I'd say now it cost you 10 bucks because you didn't report, nothing, nothing like that. We do not ask for any financial information, your social security number. Right. Um, we are truly just trying to find out how many people live in the United States um, on April 1st, 2020. Behind that, I think it's really important that people understand the confidentiality with the Census Bureau is everything stays in a silo. We report out in the aggregate we do not report out any personally identifiable information. Hmm. 
you will never be able to, from Census Bureau data, find out that Tori Del Favre lives in Capitola. That doesn't come out that with my census data. So um, people need to also understand that we do not share any information with any other agency. Local law enforcement, we do not share any of your personal personally identifiable information with ICE, FBI, anyone. We um, report out in the aggregate. Let's finish up because we have just a minute or so left. Let's finish up again. What's the use? What's the purpose? How is that that 675,000, 675 billion? billion? Yes. You see, you know, it's, it's incomprehensible, the amount. Uh, what's, it, what's it doing? How, how do we benefit from it? So one minute and then. Well, you know, I don't think anybody in Santa Cruz County will say that we need less federal funding. Right. So that $675 billion, um, we want to make sure that Santa Cruz County gets their fair share. The goal of the Census Bureau is to have a full and accurate count of the population of the United States for political representation. And beyond that, those numbers are used to distribute federal funds. So we just want everybody to know that they count. It's important. And everybody truly does count. And that's where I think the beauty of the census is. Well, I definitely think that Diane Cowan, Tori Del, Del Favreau, and I count, so we will <laughs> participate in the, in the, in the census. Yeah. And thank you so much for being here and shedding a little bit of light. Uh, when people have more questions, uh, they can contact you at um, tori.s.del.favreau at 2020census.gov. Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. for having us. We and appreciate it. You. And thank you to our listeners on KSQD 90.7 FM, Exploring Santa Cruz, a bi-weekly program by Jean Kratzer and Matilda Rand. Today we discussed the 2020 census coming up on April 1st in 2020. To recap some of the contact information, the website for the Census Bureau is 2020census.gov. If you're interested in jobs with the Census Bureau, 2020census.gov forward slash jobs. And of course, if you're interested in learning more about what Santa Cruz County is doing, go to santacruzcountycounts.us. And finally, again, the email address for Tori Del Favro, tori.s.del dot favro at 2020census.gov. Tori is spelled T-O-R-Y. Favro is spelled F-A-V-R-O. And my name is Matilda Rand, and thank you. See you next time on Exploring Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm.